Now, let's say everything just holds the way it is. So I know that I'll have Auburn and Oregon in the national title game. But how does sort of the rest of the BCS look? Does anyone get left out? Well, somebody's obviously going to get left out. It happens every year. But, you know, start with one and two in the Rose Bowl. This year, the way that it would fill out, obviously, the, the, the I'm sorry, the one and two in the national championship game. The Rose Bowl would have the Big Ten and Pac-10 champions. And we're talking about Oregon, the Pac-10 champ, playing for the national title. So that spot has to be filled. There's a clause this year that says that would have to be filled by a non-AQ team. Right now, the highest ranked non-AQ is TCU. It could be Boise by the end of the year, but if the season ended today, that's TCU against Wisconsin. That goes on to the Sugar. They have to replace the SEC champ, which they've lost to the title game. I think they take another SEC team in LSU. They're looking for a big name team with a lot of fans. I think they would choose Ohio State right there to fill that spot. Then you go to the Orange Bowl. Virginia Tech, the ACC champion, is the anchor team. And now Virginia Tech is in that spot. That's not good for Boise because Virginia Tech and Boise played to open the season. Bowls don't like to have a rematch of a game that's already been played. So right now, I would say they would look for a team from the Big 12 that was not the conference champ. The team right now that projects to be the Big 12 champ is Nebraska. That would put them in the Fiesta Bowl. And they would play the Big East champ because that's the leftover team. The Fiesta has the last pick. Nobody's going to take the Big East champ, and they would get them. How about the Bulldogs of Mississippi State? I think it's a team that if you look at them talent for talent in the SEC, it ain't even close. It is not even close. They haven't been able to throw the football. Dan Mullen really doesn't have a quarterback. What the heck? I'll play to my strengths. I'll run the football. I'm completing seven passes a game. I threw it one time in Gainesville in the Throwing second half. Throwing or completing? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I th he threw it one time. He threw yeah. one pass attempt in the second half against Florida. A lot of coaches are going to pass regardless just to stay to keep some kind of balance. But they've done it running the football and just being physically tough, one of the best rushing attacks in the SEC. And I think Dan Mullen's probably going to parlay this into a nice nice head coaching job because if he can do this with this this team and this caliber of offense, I think that he can do a lot of different things. He's already, already have a head coaching job. job. Yeah. 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 He's trying to get you no, a position, no. trying to get Dan Mullen. Well, I'm saying he's going to parlay into another job. Oh. I'm saying please. he's going to get another oh. job. They've been the only program that's been able to stop Auburn. Yeah, 17 14. <laughs> oh, Clemson did it too. They didn't win, though. Uh, yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> Couldn't stop Alabama this week, but that's another point. <laughs> well, we all thought that when Dan Mullen came up SEC Media Days and he's talking about contending for an SEC title this season, there was a lot of talk. We said in the SEC. You thought he was going all like, Tim Brewster on you? Hold your horses, but they've ended up being one of those teams. They found a way to yeah. just always stay in the conversation. Right. Let's look ahead to this very important game in the Western Division. Mississippi State head coach Dan Mullen saying about Arkansas's quarterback Ryan Mallett. He has the arm strength where he can throw a pass 50 yards and it seems like it takes about half a second for it to get oh, there. Yeah. I mean, it, it won't even get six feet off the ground. Yeah, just, psh, a straight uh, bullet. On a, on a laser beam. I mean, it, it's incredible what Ryan Mallett can. And you know what that makes you do? Think about the defensive side. There are some throws you don't have to defend. I don't have to defend the field 52 yards wide. I can let the last 10 outside the hash be left alone. Not with Ryan Mallett, you can't. I mean, this guy can absolutely sling it. The best passing offense in the SEC. And when you look about this matchup with, with Mississippi State, this is a good, aggressive defense by Manny Diaz. You're going to have to take shots, take some chances, and really try to pester Ryan Mallett. Because if he gets comfortable in the pocket, whew, nighty night. One of the best passing offenses Eight. against what has turned into one of the best rushing offenses yep. in the SEC from Mississippi State. Now, we saw the Razorbacks struggle with Auburn and Cam Newton in that spread option attack. I'm not comparing Cam Newton and Chris Frell. <laughs> okay. I'm not being foolish. That's good. But is the Razorbacks defense going to struggle because they did have challenges with that system before? Yeah, I, the one thing I uh, say about Mississippi State, first of all, Dan Mullen's done an amazing job with Chris Ralph and this offense because they don't even try to throw the football. Against Florida in Gainesville, they threw the football one time in the second half. I mean, he is perfectly content doing what suits his football team best. They do a great job of staying in manageable situations on third down. Chris Ralph, I promise, guys, when you watch this game, you won't mistake him for Ryan Mallett. He's not going to throw the football over the yard. Coming in this past week, he averaged seven completions a game. That's it. Ryan Mallett averages that a quarter. So they want to run the football, play solid defense. This is one of those games, though, where Arkansas might take them out of their comfort zone a little bit and make them throw a little bit more. But Dan Mullen, kudos to you for what you've done with Mississippi State. It has been an incredible year for those Bulldogs. Arkansas's DJ William and Tennessee's Luke Stocker, both named to the list of eight semifinalists for the 2010 Mackey Award, which goes annually to the top tight end in college football. William 
him second on the Razorbacks with 42 catches for 491 yards and three touchdowns. And 7 o'clock Eastern, you can watch Arkansas at Mississippi State. What will we see? This is going to be fun. I mean, something's got to give. You look at the, the contrast in styles. Mississippi State doesn't want to throw it. Arkansas doesn't want to run it. So I think it's going to be a fun matchup. But Arkansas, they're firing on all cylinders. And look at their two losses this year. I mean, they lost to Alabama, who's obviously, who else did they lose to? They lost to another team that's in the top 20. I mean, that's, that's what they've done. Their two losses have been good. You're talking about Auburn and Alabama. So all you've lost to is the state of Alabama, and both of them were in the top two when you played them. That SEC West showdown is on ESPN at 7 so, Eastern. Let's move on to the SEC West because a very good battle of two very good offensive minds. When Arkansas and Mississippi State hook up, it's Bobby Petrino and Dan Mullen going after it. You consider how much of an uphill climb it is for these two teams in the SEC West with Alabama, LSU, the Auburn Tigers. You look at a team like Arkansas out there, number 16 recruiting class nationally. That's the sixth best class in the SEC. So you have to do a lot of work if you want to make noise there. Bobby Petrino, though, you look at his class, a lot of offense. What kind of statement is he making? Yeah, we're going to keep scoring points. We you think we score a lot now. We're bringing in a bunch of guys to help us score even more. And I know if you're looking at this class, you're thinking, where is the defense? Remember, you got to go back in time a little bit. 2010 class, a decent amount of defensive help. And if you look at the statistics, they're actually not that bad. They're usually in the top half of the of the uh, excuse me of the SEC in most defensive categories. So they're playing decent defense, but you're looking at what they got right now. Offensive lineman, Mitch Smothers, Bray Cook. Mitch Smothers I really like because he's versatile. Listed as a guard, could play center, could play tackle. Demetrius Dean, Gervonta Riles, both top 10 tight ends. They're bringing in help at wide receiver. Let the points soar. <laughs> It's a new breed of SEC football, I guess. It certainly is. How about the Mississippi State Bulldogs and the job that Dan Mullen has done? 23 verbal commitments, and 17 of the 23 are in-state kids. That's good. That means they're winning the battle versus Ole Miss. But most notably, there are seven kids in this state listed in the athlete category. What that tells me is there's a core nucleus on defense that Dan Mullen already has inherited. They're going to get faster, they're going to get more athletic, and they are going to put some guys on defense that can play in space and create a lot of mismatches offensively. That's the name of the game for Mississippi State. It's been the one thing that they've been missing for over a decade now. So look for a lot of team speed and a lot of overall space players, as I call them, to be infused into Starkville and, and really upgrade this roster in terms of their overall overall athleticism. They want to turn into a team that opponents look at on tape and say, we better bracket some coverage over this guy. He could cause some problems, and that's not something they've had in the past. A lot of great yeah. atmospheres down there in the SEC, and one of them is the site of a game, uh, an SEC game tonight, Arkansas and Mississippi State. Now, Starkville may not scream great atmosphere, but this team's playing well. This team's going for an eighth regular season win for the first time in 11 years. Arkansas may have its hands full in Starkville as we head that way, and Holly Rowe. Mississippi State is trying to regroup this week after a close game against Alabama got away from them when they allowed three touchdowns on consecutive plays. Their defensive coordinator Manny Diaz looked at the tape and he said it all came down to missed tackles. So they tried to reinforce that this week at practice with a tackling circuit and emphasizing pursuit to the football. He said if one guy misses someone else has to be there on the mistake so it doesn't turn into a touchdown. They face Arkansas and we spoke to quarterback Ryan Mallett who said he thinks the Razor backs are playing as well as anyone in the country right now and at eight and two Arkansas has a lot to play for with a possible BCS berth in their future if they can get a win against the Bulldogs. An interesting game in the SEC is Arkansas which believes they have a shot to be a BCS at large team if they can win out which would include beating LSU. It's Mallet against a very suspect Bulldog secondary. Yeah and, and I think you got to believe Mallet's going to have a chance on the road to put up some big numbers but wouldn't shock me to see them maybe stumble around this week and then give it LSU the week after. Now Houston Nutt has a pretty good history of pulling upsets here, but Ole Miss's defense has gone away and 79% of America's vote thinks that Arkansas is going to stay on track for a potential BCS bid win on the road. Well, the quarterback's pretty good in Arkansas. Yeah. And I, I can only tell what I see. I haven't seen that much of Ole Miss, but I like Arkansas a lot. Uh -huh. Coach, let me tell you something. Only one football team has beaten Mississippi State at home. That's Auburn. 
upset Mississippi State over Arkansas. That's a good point. I mean, they did battle. and they, 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 that was a close a, game, absolutely. too. Absolutely. They could have won. They dropped the pass late. Yeah. I, I think Mississippi State ah. has what it takes to be able to win this game. I think Arkansas is just a team still not able to be as consistent on the road. I'll go with you. I like the Bulldogs. Good pick. Players as his sons, and he says there's, there's no handbook in the coaches profession for losing one of your sons during the course of the year. Arkansas won the toss. They want the football and will receive. And it will be Lance Ray at the goal line. Out across the 20 where he's met and dropped at about the 24-yard line. And quickly up to the line on a first down in Arkansas territory. Now the option. And Ralph is going to just have to eat this one. 7-0 Mississippi State capping an 86-yard drive. That guy. 11 of them of 70 yards or more in less than two minutes. Davis, first down, a bunch more. There's one of those types of scores as he'll take it the distance. Touchdown, Arkansas. 62 yards. That didn't take long. No. <laughs> What a beautiful lead block by Ray Dominguez, number 73. Watch the big tackle get out in front of the play. He kicks the corner out of the way. The bold touchdown runs has been beautiful execution. You're going to see a down block here, a down block here. Then you're going to see Ray Dominguez break out, and you're going to see the center. Swanson also pull. Both guys are going to get excellent blocks out on the perimeter. Dominguez is going to take out the cornerback Banks, and watch the center get the safety, Wade Bonner, and then it's Clear sailing for Niall Davis. That's two big men out in space, both getting their guys on the ground. And as we saw against South Carolina, when Niall Davis gets that corner, just forget about it. And in that case, you could. Here's Ralph looking to throw on first down, and he's not going to get the opportunity. Loss of three. Jerry Franklin with the sack. And keep on going as hard as you can. At the 20, first down, Arkansas. Davis, who took it 62 yards the last time he touched it, has got about 13 more. Roderick Green in the lineup. They fake it to him, and the throw's complete. Down to the 26-yard line. Gutsy call. Well, gutsy call, and the reason you make this call is because you have a quarterback who has the ability to make throws even when he's off balance. This was well defended by Mississippi State. Watch Ryan Mallett know that he's got to get this ball off while he's backing up. Not every quarterback in the country can make that throw accurately for a first down. Special correct myself. Somebody corrected for me. Mallett. <laughs> well, there's DJ. And Williams inside the 15. Got a great block, and he might take it to the corner. Touchdown. Jerry is right with a crushing block on Chris White, the linebacker, and he's still down. Receivers were to Mallett's left. They designed the screen to go to the single receiver left on that side, which was the tight end, D.J. Williams. Good blocking downfield. There was the block by Jarius Wright, but just a, a perfect call at the right time. There's the end of that play, the block by Jarius Wright and an unsuspecting Chris White. And some nifty running by the tight end from one side of the field to the other corner of the end zone. Right, he's keep us posted from the 26-yard line. First down, Chris Ralph flares it out to Robert Elliott. And Elliott dropped the ball, and Arkansas has got it. Eric Bennett on top of the ball. Safe pass again on first down. They were going to have a positive gain. And just a case of a back not take care of the football. Here's Ballard. Cuts it back to the right, spins his way out to the 32, maybe the 33 yard line. Ryan Mallett's 25th touchdown pass has given him a seven point cushion. Should they win this game and then beat LSU next week, they'd be in a pretty good spot. Ballard got through for a pickup of about a yard. And then Krim made the stop. Unless they've got a fake coming up. And they do. Hutchins trying to go left. Yeah, I don't know. The it's spot will determine. Yep. All going to be ten, depend on the spot. It's right on the line, but the line is unofficial. Fans don't like the spot. I think it, it was a pretty good one, actually, or a fair one. Put it that way. 
Well, he had an escort. He had three blockers out there, but a nice tackle from behind that time. Ooh. Lance Ray, number 82, he made a great play for Arkansas, but this time he'll keep it again. Ooh, that met in the hole that time. It was Anthony Leon, the outside linebacker. A few big arms in the SEC. Heavens, that didn't work. At the 29 yard line, Ryan Mallett going to work. Extra man with pressure coming. His pass is going to DJ Williams, though. And Williams has got it all the way down inside the 40 yard line of the Bulldogs. It doesn't take Arkansas long to move it 32 quick yards. But he's not playing football here, and we didn't do anything wrong. Here's Davis. And Davis broke a tackle, got to the outside, and out of bounds with a first down. After this kick, too. 32 yard attempts on the way, and it is good. So with less than a minute to go, and Perkins with him in the backfield. And it's Perkins. Perkins trying to cut it outside. Nice job to stay with it. First half, we'll check in with Holly. Well, Coach, you've fallen behind in this ball game, and in one drive, you ran a fake punt and went for it on fourth down. How did you have the courage? Well, you know what I mean? We believe in our kids. They believe in each other. We're here to win this game. we got a great atmosphere, a great crowd. And uh, you know, we just got to keep making plays and got to make some tackles on defense, giving up too many big plays. In that situation, though, you stopped him in the red zone, held him to just a field goal. How critical was that? A huge stop, huge stop for our defense right there. We've been a little bit and given up a couple touchdowns, but that's a big stop. We get the ball to start the second half. We got to have a great drive. Is your voice going to hold out? Oh, I'll be fine. I'll right. be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Won't be that good on his coach's show, probably, whenever he he's got But that's the base running play, the counter. He picked up a couple at second down and eights. That time, a good job defensively. Technique by the corner. Here comes the extra pressure. They pick it up again. He sailed it. Is there a flag? No. Incomplete. Eric Bennett covered. Completion. Look how far inside he is. But they tried to run an inside route, and that went right to where the defender was. Now, there was some contact. So far, they haven't moved an inch. And they'll run it. Davis, and he's got it. Arkansas was there to make a nice play. Here comes a blitz. A delayed blitz as well. And in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Arcedo Clark. He wasn't able to step into this throw. It's the safety, Tremaine Thomas, and the ball floated out. It was accurate, but it was a floater. And that enabled Bennett to get there. ESPN. 22-yard line, first down, Arkansas. Mallet play action, comes up and fires this one to Cody Hamilton, and he breaks free. And down the sideline, run out of bounds at about the 44-yard line. Mississippi State bumped his clears out of that backfield. And Ralph wants to throw on first down. Not going to get the chance this time as they sack him for a loss here. Almost 19 minutes. But when you look back, that might not just be your run-of-the-mill five-yard penalty we just saw. Long ball to the end zone, broken up. By Elton Ford. Held really? this ball a little bit too long instead of getting it rid of it. But Elton Ford made a nice play. Arkansas 13th right now. Mississippi State's got the lead here. And a handoff. Ballard got it to the 35-yard line. 28 of Arkansas. Mississippi State continues to drive here late in the third quarter. And Ralph takes it for three more. The ball came out. Arkansas has covered it. Let's see if they blew it down or not. Down or not. No call yet. Now there is a Darius Winston. Somebody just threw a swing down there, and there's a late flag at the end of the play. It's definitely a fumble. I think it was Jericho Nelson that made the hit on the football. Now you see the second man going in. His knee's not down. The ball's already out on the backside over there. Now Rudell Krim was. The juice let loose. Won't play anymore. Mallet. Deep middle, wide open. Jarius Wright trying to get his balance. If he can, he might take it. Breaks the tackle down the sideline. Got a block, and he's in. Touchdown, Arkansas. Did we mention quick strikes? 80. Eight yards. Receiver, but the play action fake pulled the safety number five, Whitley, up. 
And the receiver, Jarius Wright, ran right by him. That little bit of play fake fooled the safety. And that's all that Ryan Mallett needed. Joe Adams got a nice little push block at the end on the linebacker. Here's the route, and the safety is going to get fooled by the play fake. He's got to be deep in coverage, and he bites on the fake. Nice job by Wright to keep his balance. I thought he was going to land on his nose at about the 50-yard line and then down the sideline. There's Adams push on Chris White, the last guy that had a chance. And Mallett's going. Here we go. Kick goes to the eight-yard line to Perkins. Oh, oh, man. Did Perkins just change directions courtesy of Freddie Burton? Give way to the senior who was ejected for that punch throw. This time to tackle and regain the lead. Ralph got a man in his face, kept his balance by putting his left hand down, but he's going to get knocked down by Jericho Nelson. So Jericho closed in a hurry. Yeah. Holly loves that name. Had to get that one in for him. At the 35, and Ralph goes down again. Jake Beckett. The captain of the defense with a sack. Well, Beckett guessed on the snap count. He saw with a lead and the ball. Mallet, play action, goes back the other way, completes it to Hamilton. Broke a tackle, stiff-armed a man, and got about 15. Charles Mitchell brought him down. <laughs> right now we got a lot of Ryan Mallet for the Razorbacks, who comes up firing out to Joe Adams. Adams, so quick. Did he get there? To the one-yard line. What a burst of speed by Adams, 21 yards. The play, reaching for the goal line, and he was down just inside the one-yard line. Elbow down right there. The first and goal, Arkansas, a three-point lead. Davis behind Mallet, gets the call, and the touchdown. Well, another... Scoring drive of 73 yards for Arkansas has padded their lead to 10 with just over 10 to go. And now the folks in Fayetteville are still thinking BCS. Got to take care of this game first, but if they would win it and then beat LSU next week. Play fake, turns to fire in the flats. Got his man first down. And Stuman the fullback. And again, we saw Ryan Mallet do that a couple of weeks ago. And he first down at the 15. Ralph to Ballard, and Ballard lost a couple. And now it's going to be under a minute before they get the next snap. Like Todd said earlier, we'd love to just win this thing outright. Counter again. This time read pretty well and played pretty well by Tenarius Wright. Well, now it's third down. You can't really spike the ball because then it's fourth down. So you got to call a play and get lined up and run it here. Arkansas almost offside in the neutral zone. Ralph to throw all day again. Now he's going to take off. A little bit of indecision cost him dearly, but he got it down to the eight-yard line. Now they got to run their field goal unit on because he didn't get out of bounds and they have no timeout. So they have to run the field goal team on and snap the ball. They've got time to do it. It's 15 and counting. That's plenty enough time to line this field, go up and execute it. Senior out of Woodlands, Texas, Derek DePasquale, to try to get us to overtime. Kick on the way, and it's good. Talk about taking it to the wire. We're going to flip the coin. You get the pick. Whoever wins the toss gets the pick. Offense or defense. All right? You're going to call. You call tail. You call the tail? Oh, it is a tail. We want defense. We want defense. You want defense. We want defense. Play right, that on that end. All right. Turn around. Put your backs over here. Put your backs over here. Yeah. 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 On the call. And we'll play defense. Mississippi State. First down. Play. Yeah, <laughs> Ballard trying to find a place to hide and maybe got three yards out of it, actually. Jerry Franklin was the first guy to meet him. Bulldogs keep it going here in overtime. Their first possession. Ballard, 10, tricked. Oh, 
he's still on his feet, and the ball came out at the very end. Where are they going to spot this? At about the one? Wait, I think it's a touchback. Whoa, it is. Well, it's a counterplay. It's a fumble. Went into the end zone. Touchback. The Arkansas ball at the 25-yard line. Oh, man. You talk about a crazy finish. Jericho Nelson hit him. And it's right. It went through the end zone and out of bounds. Nelson put his helmet right under the football. Ballard just trying to keep his balance and trying to get to the pylon. And right here as he stretched out, helmet on ball. And I still, from that angle, it's so hard to tell the trajectory of the ball and the direction it was headed. But it was going. It had to be going the other way if the helmet was on it. The previous ball is under further review. It was tremendous effort by Ballard to keep his balance. He has the first down inside the five, and he's fighting for the goal line when he lost the ball. I mean, it was a beautifully executed counter play and a timely hit by Jericho Nelson right by the goal line. He's reaching to try to stretch the ball over the goal line, and Nelson hit it. And then a ruling on the field again was touchback. And there's the best angle right there. Yeah, the question is. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Fumble out of bounds. First down, Arkansas. The Razorbacks are back in business. Hawker for the win. Kick on, he missed it to the left. There's life in the dogs. <laughs> the start of second overtime, Mississippi State has chosen to play defense. DJ Williams. Mallet fires complete. And it's inside the 10 to Jarius Wright. On the left side of the formation. He wanted to go there, comes back to his safety valve. Davis, touchdown. Seven yard scoring toss. Ryan Mallett's third of the ball game. He kept his head in it, and he gets a seven yard touchdown pass. Well, I think he wanted to go to DJ Williams right here. That was his intended route, but nobody covered Niall Davis. And Mallett saw that and said, shoot, I'll take the easy throw, and let's put the, bar the burden on Mississippi State. Second and six. Ballard again, hit in the backfield. He's going to lose a yard. Terrell Williams. He run twice. Third and seven. Wants to throw, does, off the fingertips of Clark, and it's fourth down. Well, he had it. Mm -hmm. throw. Bump is his favorite receiver tonight, is in a slot to the left. Here's the ball game, and it's going to end in a sack. Arkansas wins in overtime. Second time we've seen Jake Beckett get off the ball quickly, and Tenarius Wright coming from the other side. Boy. Yeah. Huge road win for Bobby Petrino. Keeps their, actually their BCS hopes alive. And a disheartening loss for the guys at home in Mississippi State. They played their hearts out. Watch these two ends. And Tenarius Wright's the guy who's going to get the sack. But they are in a sprinter stance. Guest on the snap count. And he went right around the best lineman. Derek Sherrod couldn't get the block made. And Arkansas gets the win. Disappointed seniors at home for Mississippi State. They played beautifully. They just came up a little bit short for Nick Bell and all the fans.